Good afternoon, everyone. Uh, so this is my uh, final project for the uh, Deep Neural Network course in uh, John Hopkins University. And uh, uh, in this context, uh, we try to build a machine learning model that can uh, take in an image and then count um, how many pests on the image such that the farmer can um, you know, get uh, information from the expert, uh, advice from expert in terms of how to, uh, you know, apply their pesticides. And uh, uh, there are uh, several terms defined here. Uh, one is the American bollworm, the other is the pink bollworm. They are two types of, uh, you know, pests that might uh, have different impact on the uh, cotton uh, farm. Um, and, and then there is this mean absolute error uh, that is a metric that will be used uh, to evaluate uh, the performance of the model. We'll talk a little bit more there. And the goal of this competition is to count number of pink ballworm and American ballworm in um, an image. And uh, uh, Indian farmers in 2017 lost a large portion of crop due to uh, the ballworm um, infestation. And counting the types and numbers of ballworm helps the farmer to make informed decision uh, about whether to use pesticides or not uh, and how to apply them. Um, and data was kind of collected from the Indian cotton farm since 2018. And this data set contains approximately uh, 13, um, you know, southern images. So it's a real world, it's a real world problem. And uh, uh, several variety of the images, uh, you know, this is Im images uh, will be taken by different uh, App versions uh, image will be taken by different farmers and uh, uh, you know deep, different mobile phone and um, you know uh, the data set may contain random images such as the a selfie or uh, farm picture picture of plants right so uh, our model has to uh, output counts zero in such cases in terms of the summation format you know uh, uh, there is a for each image ID unique image ID. Uh, it will be also ha uh, you know has a dash ABW means the counts of um, American ballworm associated with that image ID, uh, and this dash um, un or underscore PBW um, represents the number of uh, uh, pink ballworm associated with the same image. And then uh, this is a specification of all the hardware that we use to train uh, this model. And you can see that the original data set is over 28 gigabyte. Um, a little bit more in um, you know this uh, definition of the uh, metric, you know we have a uh, a cer certain amount of images. So this i represents the total amount of images, uh, and then this small i is the index of the image. And then for each image, uh, uh, there there can be two types of the uh, past, right? So there are a set of uh, past labels, and uh, p can be uh, you know uh, labels for. Uh, um, in this case, I made a little bit mistake because uh, um, you know p can can be abw or PBW, but uh, 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 it's actually the object. So one image could contain multiple objects, and uh, um, and each object can be uh, ABW or PBW. So uh, uh, in this case, uh, uh, we um, this given the uh, P, given the given the label, uh, you know, uh, we, our model estimate. Um, counts for such label and uh, this one is given uh, the label uh, is a um, this is a uh, uh, actually not it's not estimated counts it's actually the the the, the true counts 
um, for the for the label P, right? So uh, this computed the error between the estimated counts for for example ABW and the estimated uh, and and the true uh, counts for uh, label P. Um, in in that case, uh, we take the MAE and we sum across all the objects and all the images uh, and then we divide it by the total number of image in the sites and this will be used as a metric for measuring how good the, uh, the model is performing and you can see that uh, during the process um, we improved uh, our model multiple times until we reach uh, I think it's rank 96 but um, I could be cheating there Anyway, um, so uh, pre-processing the image is given in raw image format, which is uh, over you know twenty-seven gigabyte, and uh, we downloaded them and put them into this folder structure, and uh, then um, essentially, you know, this CSV was also given uh, as a you can see there's this is an example of the negative image where uh, there's no type of object, there's no uh, polygon um, is given. And uh, here is it is a positive image where uh, for each uh, image ID uh, you will get multiple each unique image ID associated with this image. Um, you will get uh, multiple records showing you all the objects. In this case, there is one, two, three, four, five. So you have got five records here. And uh, in terms of uh, where where the object is located, uh, uh, it is given by a string polygon. Um, and, and also the, the, the type. In this case, it's all of them are um, you know, ABW. And uh, uh, we utilized the uh, TensorFlow Keras U Tensor image data from directory. Uh, we we load from this uh, uh, you know folder in terms of uh, um, you know eighty percent training and uh, twenty percent uh, validation. And during the process, we also resize the image uh, into five tar by five tar pixels because the raw image could have different size, and we need to fit the neural neck with a, a fixed um, you know, uh, ratio and, and dimension. And we, uh, it's very inefficient to work with uh, raw uh, you know, images. We have to utilize, uh, you know, write our customized uh, functions to convert the raw image into TF records. Uh, once we do that, you can see the 28 gigabyte image got uh, compressed to uh, less than one gigabyte, uh, and uh, uh, it's also much faster to read and uh, to read um, for the for the pipeline to read one image out of this. And a little bit on the data set pipeline, we build a, a interleaved uh, reader that read uh, you know one record from zero or one record from uh, one two three and then read from zero again so it's kind of a mixed um, interleaved type of uh, reader and then uh, it, it parse the uh, information in the TF records um, uh, because TF records is essentially stored everything in um, the, the, the bad string um, and then we uh, parse that into uh, you know the use for uh, format. Um, you know, for example, the uh, image is NumPy array or whatever, um, and then the ID is string things, things like that. Um, and then uh, we also shuffle the samples once we read in for the training purpose, and then. Um, we sample from the shuffled uh, data side uh, and make a batch. Um, uh, we make a 10 image per batch in, in our case, but it's configurable. Uh, and then we repeat um, 
for uh, you know for training data set we repeat it after the whole epoch is uh, exhausted and then uh, we prefetch it for GPU training uh, this is the visualization of what you get when you read this data side um, you know you uh, if you plot the first nine image out of the um, the first batch uh, you will see that uh, um, you know uh, this image are negative image and uh, for a positive image you, you, it contains the uh, defined past there insights there um, the overall app architecture we build is uh, uh, we pass in the image and uh, uh, we in, into a classifier and that classifier can charge if a positive image or a negative image if it's a positive image we uh, will uh, apply less filtering uh, uh, on the object detector um, so you will see what I mean later on this is talking about the uh, score threshold and the um, you know uh, non-max suppression threshold um, and then if it's a negative image we uh, apply heavy filtering uh, when, when we use the object detector to do the inference and then the object detector is responsible to tell us uh, how many counts um, of a PBW on an image and how many counts for a, a ABW. This is uh, essentially showing you that uh, the training process for uh, image classifier. We use the transfer learning, um, you know. Uh, we loaded the pre-trained weights from, um, you know, this efficient night version uh, V2B3, um, and uh, initially the accuracy was low, and after several training, uh, we got a uh, higher uh, accuracy. Uh, and then it's the key part, which is uh, training um, and object detector Udo version two, right? Uh, once we trained the classifier, we start training the object detector. Uh, and uh, uh, here I borrowed one image from a paper uh, to show you uh, basically uh, without in going into details, um, the U network of Yulu version 2 is uh, you know formed by a bunch of convolutional layer, max layer, um, max polling layer, and uh, uh, also the so-called scape layer. Um, and uh, uh, in our case, uh, you know, our image input uh, size is 512 by 512 by 3. Uh, and the output of the ULO network in this case is the 16 by 16 by 5 by 7. I will explain in details about these dimensions later. There are two main steps you have to uh, accomplish, uh, you, have, you have to finish before uh, you know uh, the, your model is functional is one thing is uh, you know you have to build the model structure using uh, TensorFlow API functional API and then uh, after that you have to load some pre-trained weights um, and uh, Yulo's uh, official website ha uh, has that those weights but uh, it need to be com uh, converted to uh, the Yulo version 2 uh, I mean the, the TensorFlow uh, com compatible version And uh, then we, uh, before we can train the uh, object detector, we have to prepare for some, uh, you know, labels because all the information was given uh, just in a, a, a CSV. We read it in uh, as pandas data frame as our raw database. Then we have to write code to be able to. Uh, search for how many boxes is uh, you know for all the boxes and all the uh, class of the box and uh, based on the uh, image id um, because these polygons are uh, given in a string format and usually we don't directly work with polygon uh, instead uh, we work with something called bonding box um, and uh, mm, the bonding box uh, uh, defines uh, in this case uh, let me explain a little bit more on this. So, uh, in, 
Essentially, uh, if you have an object on your image, uh, then the convention that we use is the y, uh, the x direction is here, the y direction is here, and then uh, we might have a 5 tor by 5 tor pixel image, right? So uh, the, the definition of the bounding box is the bounding box uh, bounds the object, and then we have to uh, specify the left top corner, which is x mean, uh, y mean, right? And then in this case, this one uh, right corner, uh, right bottom corner is the x max as well as the uh, y max. So that's how you specify a bounding box. And you will, you will later on see there's different ways to specify uh, bounding, bo different convention to specify bounding box uh, as well. Uh, w one uh, convention that is used by uh, by the so uh, Yulo is is basically uh, instead of uh, saying uh, specifying the corners, uh, you specify the center and and then you specify the uh, height and width. So that's that's another convention. Um, we'll talk about that a little bit later. But essentially. Uh, What we are doing here is we used a package called Shipley. Um, it, it is able to load in the polygon, which is in string format, and convert it to Shipley polygon object. And then through calling the built-in method, uh, we will be able to uh, extract the bounding box out of the polygon. Uh, and we also need to uh, be able to search the uh, raw size of the image based on their ID, um, such that we can resize the bounding box because we co we converted all the uh, image into we resized the image into five tor by five tor, so we have to uh, resize our uh, our box bounding box as well. Give me one second. Oh, okay. Um. So this is the very illustration of what I'm talking about. Uh, basically. Uh, the raw image is in you know around 3,000 by 4,000, uh, and then there is this label on top of uh, the object. And if we resize the you know the image uh, into 5 tar by 5 tar, the box uh, coordinates needs to be resized accordingly. And uh, uh, this is uh, uh, you know kind of putting everything together. Uh, we read our uh, TF records through our data pipeline, and then you will get this data site. And uh, we wrote another function that convert and, and build, add, add more functionality on top of this uh, data site. Um, the reason for that is uh, basically if you record the original uh, TF records, uh, do not contain the box information. In, in our case, we uh, after load in the uh, image, right? Uh, the only thing we got is this, um, the ID of the image, and we wrote supporting function that allow us to uh, search for, uh, you know, necessary information to finally get the uh, resized box, which is important for training. Uh, so, in our case, we have to write additional function to extract the box uh, and class information. Uh, and um, a little bit more on the uh, this five dimension label. Um, you know, uh, basically the first four uh, from zero to three is your resized box label. Um, you know where, where it tells where your box locate, and then uh, the uh, fourth, um, you know, or or fifth, uh, or five, um, you know, that indicates the class index. Uh, in our case, zero is reserved for no object. One is the uh, pink ball worm, and two is the American ball worm. In this case, it's a two because this is the American ball worm. After, uh, if you are able to label everything correctly and uh, plot the box with, uh, you know, non-zero uh, uh, class index, then um, it 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 will show you this image that uh, um, each 
have the correct box labeled um, at correct place. Now, uh, we just read in the box information, right? Um, however, we are not able to train the neural network yet because uh, um, those information needs to be transferred uh, to a format that that is compatible for uh, with the output of the Yulo, Yulo version two. So its output is sixteen by sixteen by five by seven dimension, and sixteen by sixteen is actually a, a cell grid, um, and the five is the um, you know number of bo anchor boxes per cell, um, and uh, we'll talk about anchor box a little bit later. Uh, seven is the dimension for each anchor box label. Um, so uh, essentially, our image is a five by t uh, five tar by five tar pixel by pixel image. Uh, in this case, you know, uh, you will have this uh, sort of uh, 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 you know we. we we overlay a 16 by 16 grid on top of this uh, input image. Uh, and then um, Yulo's algorithm, essentially, if you use Yulo version one, it is only able to uh, detect one object per uh, grid cell. Um, and uh, um, in this case, for Yulo version two, uh, one improvement it made is this uh, anchor detector, uh, where you can specify five different uh, anchor detector uh, per cell, per grid cell, so that uh, you can detect five uh, objects if uh, those five objects end up um, being assigned to the same uh, grid cell. But the uh, use of anchor box is really, um, you know, I'll explain a little bit more there, is it's really, it's really enable us to detect different, uh, um, different shapes of the object uh, more Easily, uh, maybe not in this project, but uh, when you are in a car or, or pedestrian um, detection problem, if you have a car, you know your bonding box um, shape. If you define as such, it might have a higher chance to uh, capture, you know, a, a, a car, right? Um, however, if you have a, a pedestrian, you might want to. Uh, a bonding box or an anchor box that is uh, uh, in this shape, in, in this type of shape, which has lower width and uh, higher uh, height. Um, and, uh, you know, this bonding box really uh, is predefined in terms of shapes, and you have to specify it in your code. Um, and what I'm talking about the grid is uh, we, we divided these, um, you know, I'm just Drawing for that illustration purpose, there is 16 grid. So each each grid unit is actually 5 tor uh, divided by 16, right? Instead of one pixel, so it is uh, whatever this ends up to be. Um, so for each this cell, right, um, its anchor box center will be uh, uh, assigned to the center of the cell, and then you you specify the width and the height of the anchor box. In this case, if my anchor box, um, sorry for that. So if my anchor box is, uh, in this case, um, if you specify the width of the anchor box to be one and height of the anchor box to be one, uh, you anchor box exactly overlays with your grid, right? If you specify um, the width to be uh, you know, for example, two, and height to be two, then your anchor box essentially uh, extends to half there, half there, and then um, it might actually be something like that, right? You specify the shape of anchor box against a certain cell. And, and if your object end up uh, basically uh, if you ha if you do have an object that uh, um, that is, um, for example, here, right, and then that object is uh, uh, will will have another sort of uh, shape there. It will have um, a its own. It will be assigned to the nearest cell, um, but it will have a you know. It, it's its shape 
and then uh, uh, later on we'll calculate the uh, you you will later on say that uh, uh, you need to calculate something called IOU um, intersection of or in intersection over union and it actually calculate how much overlapping um, you know uh, between two boxes and one will be your anchor box uh, shape the other will be your uh, a true object and uh, uh, you can ima imagine if there is uh, more overlap here that means your anchor box is better um, it is uh, you know has a higher chance to uh, detect uh, such object and if you don't understand what I'm saying um, go maybe watch a uh, Coursera course from Andrew um, NG um, it's a great resource to learn those concepts uh, and uh, like what I said you have five different shapes of anchor box that you pre you will be it will be predefined and each of them has this uh, first one is a detector mask um, so uh, for each cell we uh, will only turn uh, I mean if this is one that means your anchor box uh, is suitable for detecting uh, such an object and um, if you have a car here th this might be one in our case we don't worry about too much of those uh, because we are detecting only uh, two classes but you can see that this uh, you know uh, insects could uh, in different orientations um, so there's still a chance that uh, different shape of anchor box could uh, help you uh, detect um, the object better but uh, without into uh, going into details uh, you know we have to uh, transfer our box information into uh, you know grid units um, and for and initialize each anchor box uh, in terms of uh, um, you know these objects and you can imagine for the majority part of these grids uh, it will be initialized to uh, just random values and this detector mass will be initialized to zero because it's a don't care right because there's no object here but for uh, the case where there is an object it will be associated with a, a certain cell maybe this one is somewhere around here um, sorry let me pull maybe uh, this this one will be somewhere around around here and um, there will be five anchor box associated with it and there is a specific shape um, that that for example the first one uh, is suitable it has the largest IOU with uh, this object then the first one will be initialized to one and then the uh, box coordinates um, you know this coordinate um, of the object will be initialized here uh, and then the class uh, will be uh, ABW which is two right so that's uh, sort of uh, um, again this uh, another details is this is seven uh, so uh, actually uh, when we convert the previous information in here um, essentially because we have this detector mask we don't need to reserve the zero for uh, uh, number of uh, no object uh, basically zero will start from uh, PBW and ABW will be uh, one uh, and and then it's dim dimension seven because uh, the class is uh, one hot encoded. Um, so there is a, a one, two, three, four, five, and this with one hot encoded. There's two class, so there will be um, you know two there. So you have in total seven dimensions. And I I also uh, draw here for illustration purpose. Uh, sorry, I might miss my um, content a little bit, but basically I was talking about this slide and uh, um, about the you know uh, the 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 shape of sixteen by sixteen by five by seven, and I was talking about uh, this uh, seven. Uh, it has the class uh, one hot encoded, and then it has the coordinates, and then it has the um, 
object conf uh, uh, confidence score there. And I was talking about this object might be uh, associated with this style, and each style has you know five anchor box, and uh, each anchor box, uh, you know, depending on the uh, the one has largest uh, IOU with the actual uh, object uh, box will be initialized uh, a one to the detector mask, and then there is this coordinates that will be initialized initialized to the actual coordinates of the object. And majority part of this, uh, you know, image will have a, um, a, you know, initialization of detector mask to be zero. So the rest of them uh, don't care, um, because there's no object there. All right, uh, move on. So. Uh, I was already talking about this, but uh, as a reminder, um, you know, uh, the box coordinates and the class index or corresponding anchor uh, will be set to the true uh, object box coordinates in the Euro format. Um, you know, if if there is if there is such an object. Um, Putting everything together, you know, we have uh, we read the TF records uh, into this raw, uh, you know, train data side. We add a little bit more functionality to retrieve um, the box, resize the box information uh, for each uh, uh, sample, and and then um, it will generate this uh, data site, uh, train data site uh, OD, um, and then uh, this function uh, really put that box information in the pixel. Um, uh, and convert it into you know the grid cell units and uh, uh, correctly initialize the anchor boxes uh, um, that uh, that 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 is the final label um, matching the prediction uh, format of the Euro, which is in um, sixteen by sixteen by five by seven. Um, you know, then finally we are ready for the training. Without it going into details, uh, mathematical details, basically the uh, loss of uh, Euro version two um, consists three portions. The first is the um, confidence law prediction loss. Uh, essentially, uh, it is the first dimension of the uh, you know this this seven, which is predict the object co uh, confidence. Um, if it's a one, it, 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 it's 100% confident that there, there is an object. Uh, if it's zero, it's, it think it doesn't have the object uh, associated with the corresponding anchor box. Um, and uh, um, the Euro prediction really will be something in between, um, while your label is actually have one or zero. Um, but if there is a deviation there, you will encounter uh, loss, and then the class loss is essentially uh, classification of the object uh, being detected. Basically, if uh, your anchor detected an object, but it uh, uh, here it misclassify it. Uh, the, for example, this ABW to PBW, then you will encounter high loss. Uh, coordinate loss is really uh, you know your prediction of uh, where the where the the object is located. Uh, if it's far away from the given, you know, coordinates given uh, true box, then you will encounter um, high loss. So, so don't be confused uh, uh, by your prediction uh, and the actual label that that you built, right? So, they are they are two different things. The um, the label is also kind of built in in terms of anchor box because you transferred everything into anchor box but the shape that from the prediction of the model it is actually prediction i already talked about uh, the euro format actually use the uh, center and the weight and uh, height convention right um, and the unit is in grid style um, and and uh, 
in some cases, uh, if your data is uh, coming in terms of the other convention, which is the corner convention, then you have to sort of uh, uh, transfer your um, your your corner convention uh, conventionally defined uh, box into the center one. And all those portion, you know, has been covered by this function. And this is a snip, uh, uh, snapshot of the uh, training process, and you can see the losses keep going down. The blue is the training loss, the yellow, uh, the orange is the validation loss. And then uh, we. Uh, also plotted for a specific image at the beginning of the training, you can see, uh, you know, there are certain um, object appears at these uh, locations. Um, while you, if you plot the heat map of the prediction out of the model, it's almost garbage. But you can see uh, um, after training for 200 airports, it's almost uh, uh, showing its capability of detecting, um, you know, the hot spot which. Um, kind of uh, shows where the object is located. And one more details to, to just pay attention to, uh, the images in pixel, which is 0 to 512, while uh, these two are in grid units, which is 16 by 16, right? Besides training, uh, you know, you have to do a lot of uh, post-processing uh, for if you chose to use ULO. Uh, one thing is, uh, you know, this unit conversion because the output of the ULO is in uh, grid cell units. It needs to be converted to maybe normalized units, which is between zero and one, and then you have to convert that to pixel units if you want to overlay your labels in, uh, on top of the uh, actual image that is 512 by 512. If you want to overlay the box to the original image um, that you passed in, um, then you have to do further. Uh, you know, coordinate uh, uh, conversion. And uh, uh, the box has to be filtered by the confidence score or um, because if you if you plot the uh, output from the ULO directly, you will see that there are a lo lot of bo boxes and a lot of them has this very tiny uh, confident score. Um, basically means that there, there is only 1% of chance that ULO think there is a object here. So we, we have to get rid of uh, the, the box with low scores, then you will end up with uh, something like here. But another issue happens because in this case there is a lot of overlaps um, of, of the boxes that detecting the same object. In order to overcome this issue, uh, you will need to use something called a non-max suppression, which get rid of the um, overlapping boxes. Uh, as a brief overview, you know it it will uh, pick the best uh, the box with the best score. In this case, 0 0.82, and then it will get rid of all the boxes that has a high overlap with this box. So that's why um, a lot of them has been you know, getting rid of, um, got rid of, um, and then it will start picking the next second um, best which is in this case 0 0.81 and a bunch of box will be got rid of um, will be got rid, got rid of and then um, so on and so forth and the overlap uh, as a reminder it measure, is measured by uh, something called in, intersection over union threshold so there's two thresholds that you need to set uh, for filtering the boxes that's also the parameter that we were talking about in that overall um, you know, the filtering that we are talking about in that overall uh, app diagram we talked about, right? If the classifier think um, this image is a positive image, then we apply a little bit less filtering uh, because we know there is a, there are objects. But um, if a classifier charge is a negative image, we might... Um, classifier also tell you how much percentage it think it is a negative image. We could, uh, based on that, apply highway filtering, meaning that uh, we filter out more boxes such that uh, there's less counts. All right, so this is a, a demo of a, 
um, the model's prediction on uh, different images. And we can see that our model has capability to uh, predict you know, different object on a single image um, and uh, uh, also uh, you know, for uh, image that taking with different device, it, it's converted to 512 by 512. And because of that, uh, a certain image has object that is uh, smaller and certain has image that is uh, object that is larger. Um, and we are, our model has ability to detect uh, those. And then for this background image, uh, it, it counts for you know zero and uh, zero. And then this one is ju there's just a bunch of oil uh, soil um, on the paper, and uh, we are able to detect zero here as well. But our model is not perfect. You can see um, we did miss some something here, and we we are missing some object there. Um, and finally, you know. Uh, this uh, context is really uh, challenging because uh, it's uh, trying to solve a real world problem. The data is coming from the uh, farm, um, the cotton farm in India, and uh, f you know since 2018, and and all the data are just provided by CSV. They are not in uh, standard format like uh, uh, you know VOC context. Uh, so in this case, uh. Uh, I have to write the whole pipeline and the uh, pre-processing process, uh, design the whole um, you know pipeline. Um, besides training the model, writing up the model um, evaluation, things like that. Um, so um, there are over seven hundred uh, people uh, or teams enrolled. Uh, only uh, one hundred forty-six uh, made the submission, and uh, I'm happy that I was able to. Uh, actually finish this context and uh, uh, getting some grade um, uh, although I was not able to win any prize this is really an intermediate level computer vision context so I am proud of myself doing a little bit error, error analysis uh, so the ULO model uh, is a Version two is sensitive to the IOU threshold. We we can see that when the insights really overlap with each other, the model had a hard time to uh, detect some of them. Um, uh, I think uh, one improved idea is to use finer grade. Uh, basically, we have a sixteen by sixteen grade, um, uh, and then uh, we could divide it into, for example, nineteen by nineteen, or even uh, you know twenty three by twenty three, or something like that. Uh, in that case, it should be able to detect uh, um, the overlapping behavior a little bit better. Another thing is we need to play with the shape and size of the anchor box, right? Uh, obviously, our anchor box might not be uh, fine-tuned uh, to detect certain, um, you know, object. For example, this one here, uh, we probably want our box to be um, a little bit tighter, right? Right now, it's uh, kind of too large. So those are the Improvement that we can can be done to improve the method if we keep using version two Yulo. Um, another thing is we could study better uh, model like uh, uh, you know Yulo version five, um, and um, another thing that is very tricky is this image. For example, it has a um, a, a guy wear a pants that uh, uh, has plot of the. <laughs> uh, you know, insect on the on the pants. Uh, it's very tricky image for uh, object detection. But when I look at the uh, classification score of this image, it actually shows uh, a little bit uh, over zero point five. Um, um, so a future idea might be we need to fine tune our model such that uh, uh, when the Classifier tells us this is, uh, um, for example, only 50% chance uh, uh, it is a positive image, then uh, we might want to even filter the score here more aggressively. For example, uh, only box that is high has a higher score than 0 0.9 survives. So in this case, they will get rid of all these boxes. But it's really a trade-off. Um, 
And then uh, we could also explicitly introduce the counting error uh, into uh, the loss function during the training. Um, uh, by that I mean uh, the CSV that given that is given by the context uh, it actually also has uh, how many counts of ABW and PBW and ABW as a ground truth. So we did not actually use that information. Um, so those can be actually introduced into the loss computing. So to penalize uh, uh, if if we count, uh, you know, too many uh, object uh, during the training, uh, it could become a little bit more complicated than what we have right now. But uh, uh, my impression is that it's going to improve uh, this performance a lot. Okay, that's all, and uh, thanks for all the um, you know great work uh, listed here. Um, without them, I won't be able to uh, you know make something work for this uh, for this context. So uh, this this reference uh, listed in um, kind of a timeline order. There's no uh, really mm, you know it's not ordered by importance. Thank you so much.